Good afternoon, everyone. Ads here from Unity Trading Group. Welcome to your Monday update. A little bit earlier than we than we used to today, uh, but I was just flicking through some charts this evening or this afternoon, excuse me. And I thought, why not? Let's uh, let's get on the, the video and let's record some stuff for the guys. So before we start today, of course, tap that like button, hit the subscribe button if you can, and of course, tick the little bell to stay updated on all of our future content. We just released an update for Gravy Train, a small one, but an important one in my opinion. The ability to differentiate between, oh, I need to uh, reload it on my chart. Give me one sec. Let me uh, describe what it is that we did change. All right, so if I go add alert, you've got cross down and cross up now, and they signify the cross up, and of course, uh, the cross down signals there. So I'm going to do a dedicated video on Gravy Train's alert system and how you can use that to your benefit. But I wanted to that update to be pushed out before I did. So that'll come out this week with some luck. Uh, if I get some time, obviously, uh, after the updates this week, I will get that video out to you guys. But again, thank you to all who are using Gravy Train so far. It's been an incredible response. And uh, I hope you enjoy it. Of course, if you want to know more about Gravy Train, you can find out through the link below in the description. <clears throat> so, anyway, let's have a look at Bitcoin. BTC, is there much happening since we spoke about it last? Not really. Um, but we'll have a chat about it anyway, and we'll see where we're going. So, from the top level that we were speaking about at 66, or six, sorry, 66, 60,000, or 60K. We didn't quite get there, unfortunately, for BTC. We got caught up on the liquidity to the left-hand side there just underneath. But we did fall back to the level of support that I spoke about, and that coincided nicely with our gravy train resistance or gravy train support cloud level there. Uh, so that coincided with the previous tops, of course, and, of course, that gravy train cloud. <clears throat> That's where I really got that level from. So that's one thing you can use Gravy Train for to find hidden support and hidden resistances. And of course, our cloud structure there formed as part of a level of resistance. And if you draw that line across, you'll find it coincides nicely with the liquidity to the left here. But where are we going from now? It's, it's really difficult to say with absolute certainty where we're going. Um, I'll be completely honest. But if we're looking at the tops and, of course, the lower highs that we're observing on the chart, uh, it would seemingly look like we are forming a lower high to continue towards the downside. And that could be that 54, uh, 54 kilometer, 54K mark for BTC. But a few things need to happen, of course. We need to make a lower low, and we are not doing that as of yet. So we are making uh, lower highs stepping up. Uh, in terms of price action. <clears throat> so it really comes down to, are we making lower highs, or excuse me, uh, higher lows? Or are we gonna make a lower low in the way of our price action for BTC? It remains to be seen. And uh, if I get the lower high, high low, lower low things mixed up, it uh, I, I know exactly what you're probably thinking. That's not exactly what is uh, what it is, but uh, I assure you uh, it is, uh, I just get mixed around, just getting confused from time and time again. So um, I do apologize, but <clears throat> you get what I'm saying. We are not making lower lows and we are not making higher highs. That's pretty much what I'm saying here in this instance. We are getting closed up in a wedge uh, in a scenario like this, for example, if we are to draw it in the chart like that. So are we going to have a movement either side of this level? It could come to fruition at any point. Uh, it really comes down to what sort of buying or selling pressure that we're seeing with BTC. We are having a little bit more ammunition, should you call it that, for the bears. So we are you know, held underneath that 50 RSI and we are looking towards that lower portion of the price action at 54K for BTC. So it really comes down to the break in to either side of this uh, this wedge formation that we're really forming here, this triangle formation, because <clears throat> they can break really to either side. It's a 50-50 shot uh, for BTC currently. And uh, if we do 
just walk to the right hand side and continue to walk to the right hand side that i'd be okay with that as well because we are looking at more upside or more potential for the altcoins in the immediate term so uh just keep an eye on that but if we're looking at the gravy train indicator for us we are in the no trade zone in the way of a uh, a gray zone on the four hour if we go on to the one hour it, in terms of the price action we're observing it's the same we are observing a no trade zone or a indecisive level in which we are observing uh, BTC. <clears throat> it comes down to, again, that break. So if we break to the downside, we will continue this red area. If we break to the upside, we will start a green area in which it was back here for our gravy train indicator. So a little bit uh, indecisive for BTC in the immediate term, but we'll, uh, we'll observe this over the next couple of days. Of course, we do these updates every single day <clears throat> all right let's move on ethereum usd in in the same sort of breath uh it's the same it's the same sort of price action we are moving to the right hand side we haven't made any ground underneath our level of demand there at 1720 and we haven't made an upside past this liquidity to the left hand side at 1880 so not much more to say about ETH. We are you know, forming or going in the same trajectory as BTC. I've seen left shoulder, head, right shoulder uh, being thrown around a little bit. I'm not sure about the validity of this formation, seeing that it's not at the top of a uh, formation there. But we'll keep it, we'll definitely keep it in mind, but it's not that valid. So uh, we'll, we'll keep that in mind. But in any case, I'd be looking for the same sort of trajectory for ETH. It's looking like it might break to the downside. You can only bend a stick so far. And the only then what I'm referring to is the wicks to the downside. There has to be a liquidity area cleared out. And that's what it looks like it's doing to me with the, uh, with the wicks to the downside. So it could mean that we could see 1720 again for our Ethereum. And of course, our RSI is supporting that fact underneath the 50 level. <clears throat> All right. Let's move on, ADA, one that we've been looking at for quite some time. And look, with ADA, it's a little bit tricky in the way of our price action that we're seeing currently because you can't really draw a level of demand here because we have smashed through the previous one, which was around here-ish. And uh, I'm not observing one until we see our next one down here at about a dollar. And of course our liquidity here at around a dollar two, a dollar three uh, for ADA, so you could, technically speaking, uh, have that sort of zone there at $1.05 and $1 exactly for ADA. So I'd be looking more so to the downside for ADA and that's getting supported by that 50 RSI as well. But before I continue and uh, just push past the wayside for ADA and uh, I would be foolish to not consider the Fibonacci retracement in which we are sitting quite nicely on the 61.8. So I'm not discounting this level at all. If we draw our horizontal line uh, through this level, and if I make it white and a little bit easier to see, uh, 118 is where we're sitting for ADA, and that resides around the 61.8. And you can see the liquidity that's been respected to the left-hand side at that level. So I'd be looking towards that area for, it, for ADA to be held currently. So if we are to see ADA bounce from here, I'd be looking towards that 38.2. If not, the 78.6 is the next area for ADA. All right, moving on, we'll have a look at XRP. XRP moving nicely in the trajectory that I like to see it moving in. So what we've seen in the last couple of days with XRP is some news coming out of the SEC where, you know, they're their legal team is is doing a, a good or putting up a good fight against the SEC in terms of is is XRP a security or not. So the only information that we've got so far is they are putting up a good fight, and the the price is reflecting that towards moving to the upside. So we have observed XRP move through this level of supply and of course through our double zero fibs towards our negative twenty seven and towards our negative sixty eight point or sixty one point eight. Where do we see it be? Well, where do we see XRP going now? So, we, what we really need to do is we need to clear some of this 
noise off the chart. So let's get rid of our fibs. We've got the retest on our previous level of demand. Let's get rid of that as well and draw in the current levels that I'm looking at. So the current levels being this area here. And of course, we've got a small area of liquidity there and I'll get rid of that one for now. So if we are to see XRP continue, I'd like to see it pull back and it's probably gonna pull back to where we broke out from, which is there. Uh, and if I draw in our current level of Fibonacci to really see where we are, that will correspond nicely with the 61.8. See how that is, uh, is pretty much picture perfect for XRP. So if we are to see it come back, we need to see it break through the 38 and possibly retest the 50 and the 61. The 38 is, uh, is the most notable level in terms of a higher high and uh, lower high scenario in terms of something like this towards the upside. So we could see this hold. If we are to see this hold, I'd be looking towards the upside of 58 cents for XRP. However, if we are to move towards the downside like we will, we have been observing with BTC and ETH, if that comes to fruition, of course, we'd be looking towards that 61.8. And that really comes down to what we see in terms of fundamental news come out for XRP. And uh, I'd be looking towards that fundamental channel in the Discord, which you can find the link down below for, uh, to really keep up to date with XRP. <clears throat> All right, the last one I have a look at today is the DXY. So, well, first things first, the DXY is a regulated market, and this is not financial advice, just ideas and opinions of the DXY of Team UTG. So we've been observing the DXY for quite some time. This is the current level that I've been looking at in terms of a swing or a level of supply uh, between those two levels here at 90.08 90, 90 and 92.24. So 92.08, 92.24. And uh, we have seen this being rejected for the second time. So as we have opened today, we've opened high, created a gap. We, are current, we have currently filled that gap on the lower timeframes. And in turn, we have been rejected a second time on this level of supply. So if we are to see the DXY do anything uh, from here, we need to see it hold the, the 23.6 and of course in turn hold our 50 level of the RSI uh, for it to play out in terms of go towards the upside at that 92.6 area. If we are to turn on gravy train as well, we are in the long territory now. We are in the, the upwards territory. Gravy train is calling an upwards trajectory. So it could be a matter for the bulls to hold this 23.6 and then continue to the upside. But we'll take more of a look at that over the course of this week. But that really concludes today's update. It has been a little bit of a longer one, but a little bit more to cover, of course. If you want to know more about Gravy Train, you can find the link down below in the description. You can find all of our links to join the Discord as well and continue the conversation in there. I'm Ads from UTG and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye for now.